After the Apex Summit in San Francisco, a lot of people are wondering, are China and the US friends again? Yeah, we have to switch the animal from Wolf Warrior to Panda. Uh, listen, guys, we got to talk about it. The Apex Summit in San Francisco just completed. We got to talk about some of the viral moments between President Joe Biden of America, President Xi Jinping of China. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications, Andrew. But you know what else is a collaboration between the East and the West? Yes, it's a friendly collaboration. Smala Sauce, it is shipping this week. I know it took a while, guys. I know a lot of people are asking where their sauce is. Trust me, it is coming. I'm very excited to share with you guys. SmallASauce.com. Uh, listen, guys. We're not geopolitical experts. There's so many think pieces written by so many people who follow this so closely, right? But I'm here to give you sort of a layman's perspective on this. Somebody who's not professionally involved in politics, right? Because right? from the outside, David, if you see the clips, it sounded like it was a positive meeting. Right, right, right. Like they're just like the whole tone was just way friendlier than you would have thought, right? Right. So what, what do you think is happening? What are some takeaways that you have from this? So, so here are my first three points, okay? It's friendlier than I thought. I think the media is distorting the story for clicks, which then leads from the media to social media. And my last part is, man, it's just nice to see the energy calm down a bit. So back to my first point, Andrew, I do think that initially when Xi Jinping got off the plane and he's shaking hands with Biden, then Gavin Newsom is giving him the NBA jersey from the Lunar New Year edition, you know, Warriors jerseys, obviously from the NBA team. And Xi Jinping lets out the biggest smile I think he's ever let out in his life. Yeah, Xi Jinping, he actually is a fan of basketball. There's a long history of him uh, of basketball in China. And he's actually a fan, even though he doesn't play that much himself. He more plays soccer. I mean, he actually had a interesting conversation with the Thai prime minister about soccer that I thought that was pretty interesting too. Oh, like, I guess he just came through like really smiley, really relaxed. And I guess everybody was just like smiling and just like hugging each other. Now, right? now, David, uh, I think it's safe to say he was seeming pretty friendly, but is there a reason for people to doubt it and to think, oh, he's lying. He's just putting on a front, guys. China's actually plotting on the low. Um, You know... I don't really think so. I do think there is real motivations behind it. China's economy is incredibly slow right now relative mm. to the past 20 years. America's economy is also slow in a different way, whether it's like hyperinflation, it's involved in all these foreign things right now. Right, and right. basically, Andrew, China and America are each other's biggest trading partners. So oh. for the way the rhetoric was to be like slipping into almost like it almost felt like the vocabulary was like going towards World War III, and then there's some real wars that break out all around the world, and everybody's like, whoa, 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 bro. You guys, how did the talk and the vocabulary and the syntax get so crazy right. between like people who own a restaurant together? Right, it's kind of weird when you see the other conflicts that are going on across the world that are real conflicts, real crazy people and, are right. dying. And, and then real you like think hatred about, in a way. And then you think about the relationship between the US and China, and you're like, it's not as bad as I thought. Right. Like, it's really not. Like, we and, steal a little the, intellectual property yeah. here and there. We do that. Like, no, yeah, I get it. America is, uh, you. I guess you could say, Judeo-Christian Protestant at its core, right? Theoretically, uh, uh, I guess China is Confucianist, or some people want to say it's Taoist or Buddhist at its core. But at the end of the day, Andrew... In modern day 2023, these are two capitalistic countries. Right. They're consumeristic. They're capitalistic. Both countries incredibly materialistic. You know, they, they make it in China. They buy it in America. They just reship it back to China to buy it again because they like the American brands. If you guys did not hear the quote that came out of it, literally Xi Jinping and Biden both agreed that war is really not an option. They essentially said that. They said, we cannot go to war. The earth can sustain both of us. We can both be successful. War should not be an option. So anyways. And, and Biden was, uh, I think, said, we have to be sure that competition doesn't slip into conflict. Yes. Through miscommunication. Right? Yes, yes, yes. So that's why they wanted to communicate. David, your second point, you're talking about the media here. Because the media, for some reason, both sides of the media, it seems like, I don't even know what right side, left side, are we talking about Fox or CNN, it seems like, they always drummed up the feelings between the U.S. and China more than they needed to. Well, at the end of the day, guys, like I said, people have to understand that media companies are there to get clicks. They're there to get watched through time. They're not there to necessarily improve the situation or even keep the populace fully accurately informed about anything. They're here to make money and sell ads just like 
any other TV show is, no, right? No, just like any YouTube channel is, just like yeah, yeah, any like, TV show is, literally. And I think that, so the first thing that went viral was SF is being cleaned up for Xi Jinping, right? That went viral, hyper viral. That's like still going on in its own way, right? And like, we made a whole video talking about it. Yes, Xi Jinping is probably the most important singular person there. Yeah. Yes, but they did clean it up in general just for the entire Apex Summit. Yeah, for a bunch of Asians. Yeah. But look at this photo of Biden standing with a bunch of Asians. Yeah. It literally, and him and the Asians, it's like, uh, was it Owen Wilson and Jackie Chan and right. Shanghai Noon? Um, I will say this. The, so the, so after they have a pretty friendly first meeting, it's not like anything big is discussed, but they're trying to smooth it out, right? We, they just want to simmer the temperature down. He uh, Biden gives a press conference to the journalists, right? And they go, hey, would you still call Xi Jinping a dictator? And then he goes, yeah, because that's what he is. They just run a di very different system than us. And then the media tries to make it into this huge thing, like China's going to be super offended and everything is like going to just crumble. Oh, you're saying that the way that the media spun that is that Joe Biden called China a dictator and now all that friendliness and that whole meeting just goes to crap. Right, well, you can see Blinken's reaction. He cringes because that's his job is to watch for messaging like that. But ultimately, it turned out to be not a big deal. And then actually, Joe Biden gets up in the middle of like one of their like boring translated talks and just like goes over to Xi Jinping and is like, uh, you know, shaking his hand and smiling. So it seems like, I guess what I'm saying is, there's a media cycle and then there's the social media cycle where people who like really don't know the whole story or don't even care to know the whole story give like a 10 out of 10 tier right, opinion. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I mean, I would say obviously Biden did make a mistake maybe by saying it that way. Even, but even though he's not technically wrong by the dictionary definition. Like, and then what? It, are people, it is a dictator. So are people mad that he called him a dictator or that he didn't back down from his previous words? Because then like, anyways... That's yeah, besides the well, point. Well, it was so weird because some people were mad at him for not being a adept statesman, right? And they're saying that's because of his age. But then other people were like, you know, I'm conservative. That's the first time I agreed with Biden. I like that he said that, man. Sound like Trump. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's so interesting to see just the myriad of reactions of people who are, you know, probably really not that invested in it, but they just like are invested almost in a tone or a narrative. Right. And uh, last but not least, Andrew, it's just nice to see the energy calm down a little bit. Mm. It was just getting out of hand, man. I really felt it. I felt like I was just like, why is everybody acting like they, they almost like want it to go to World War yeah, III? I didn't understand that part where it seemed like for the past couple years, especially people like just regular citizens were like, we're going to go to war with China. I'm like, who said that? Like, why would you think that? Like, there's literal real wars going on across the world, guys. Wait, wait, wait. You see the horrifying... Those are real wars. What China and the U.S. does, it's definitely a rivalry. It's definitely competition. There's definitely some spying. There's definitely some stealing of intellectual property. Yeah. There might be some CIA plays yeah, over in China. Now, like you said, it's Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and there is some guys, cheating. There's some there's cheating, much like It's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu match. Somebody stuck their finger in the other guy's butthole. Someone's kind of kind of scratched their eyeball on the other guy. So there's definitely some dirty play, but it's still a match right, within right, right. the confines of what a controlled match is supposed to be. Literally, this, guys, these two economies completely depend on like each other. It's like dirty sparring. Have, people, you guys, have you guys ever sparred, like, boxed your friend, and then one friend just kind of lays like a kind of a, hits a little too hard, gets you in the eye, and you're like, damn, bro, that wasn't supposed to happen. Hey, things happen. But of course, uh, Andrew, there was some people like Tom Cotton who was like, I can't believe we even let that foreign adversary on American soil, let alone shake his hand. I couldn't believe that. I Dude, couldn't. I, I don't and I'm just like, bro, I don't Dude, even. David, do you think people actually even understand what war, an actual hot war between China and America would be? would be like i think it would be really bad for both countries now you might say oh america might win that one yeah barely but everybody would be like in shambles like right, it really right, right. would not be a good idea for both people yeah and like i said guys uh we're just saying this because we're just like look like a lot of people are going to look at our situation they'll be like well you guys are chinese american of course you'd feel that way or elon and ray dalio and jamie diamond of course they'd be at that forty thousand dollar plate per dinner elon musk could be there zuckerberg i'm sure he was zooming in from his hospital bed after tearing his acl yeah y'all are are just double agents and then i'm saying listen when you have more perspective 
it motivates you to do the research to know the actual truth. Yeah. It's not that we are like blinded by it and just biased by it. It's because you do have, they have business motivations. We have uh, business, but also personal motivations to actually do the research to understand it. It's not that I'm endorsing all his policies at all. I think Xi Jinping handled uh, a lot of things. I wouldn't do it like him. You know, I wouldn't do anything. Yeah, if I was right, the right. president of America, I wouldn't do it like them either, but I'd probably change more if I was president of China. I definitely wouldn't have handled COVID that way. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, since I'm not, I just, it's, you know, let's just simmer things down a little bit. Yeah, I think it's just funny that, like, if you imagine that if China was just, like, closer, like, physically, the land masses were closer together, I think we would have found a way to work together a long time ago. But it's because a lot of people kind of have this, like, gang mentality. You know, if you go to L.A., like, there's a lot of gangs out there. And it's, like, because L.A. is more spread out, you can, like, drive to each other's, you know? like yeah, pe People are not forced to share the same spaces. People are not much. forced to, like, figure it out with each other. But, like, if you come to New York, yes, there are still gangs and violence and stuff. But, like, because people are so packed together, they can't fight all the time. Or else there would literally be, it'd be, like, chaos. It'd be, like, a war zone. So, it's, like, it's crazy to think that, like, people just have this mentality where they're, like, ah, they're across the seas. Yeah, they stole some, some some technology kill them i'm like dude guys there's like a bunch of other stuff that there's a bunch of other like actual reasons that other people would go to war not but this. yeah i mean i'm not saying there's not ideological differences you know what i mean it's yeah. just like two parents that are governing these big ass countries and like of course they're gonna make a lot of reads that the other one wouldn't make even given the same situation not even that they are in the same situation because the the histories and everything are like everything's like completely different oh, but yeah Listen, guys, I mean, I think they got to ease up over there, too, on censorship and a bunch of stuff, too, as well. You know, I get it. You know, I think we got to make some changes over here. But the one thing we should just do is all just calm down a little bit. It's not, you don't want war. Nobody wants war. Dude, I'm just extrapolating it. China goes to war with America. Russia gets involved. America got to get everybody else involved. So it's crazy. It's too crazy, man. It's crazy. Why would you want that? I don't understand why people would even want to start that. But anyways, guys, uh, let us know in the comments down below. Do things look a little bit more friendlier now? Uh, it, does it seem a little bit more calm? It seemed like there was a good meeting overall. It was a net positive. So uh, I think that's good in general, you know. But uh, you guys let us know in the comments down below. And uh, until next time, with the Hot Pot Boys, we out. Peace. Peace.